Welcome, Mrs. Meeker's classroom family. If you don't know me, I'm Mrs. Meeker. I'm a fourth grade Title I teacher out of Oklahoma. And today we're gonna to read a little more of The Tiger Rising. So um, listen up, there's gonna be some interesting stuff happening. Last time we met, Rob had just decided what he was going to do. So let's see what happens next. Today we are reading chapters 26, 27, and 28 of The Tiger Rising by Kate DiCamillo. Chapter 26. He left Willie Mae at the motel and went down the highway. Sistine, he shouted as he ran. Sistine, he screamed. And miraculously, he saw her, her orange dress with the pink polka dots glowing on the horizon. Sistine Bailey. Hey, he shouted, Sistine, I got something to tell you. I'm not talking to you, she shouted back, but she stopped. She turned around. She put her hands on her hips. He ran faster. I come to tell you about the tiger, he said when he caught up with her. What about him? I'm fixing to let him go, said Rob. Sistine squinted her eyes at him. You won't do it, she said. Yes, I will, he told her. He reached into his pocket and pulled out the keys and held them in front of her proudly as if he had just con conjured them up, conjured them out of thin air as if they had never existed before. I'm going to do it, he said. I'm going to do it for you. Whoo-ee, somebody screamed and Rob turned and saw Beecham come speeding right toward him in his red Jeep. Oh no, whispered Rob. Is it him? Sistine whispered. Rob nodded. Beecham pulled over to the side of the road, spraying mud and Edwin water everywhere. You out getting your exercise, he hollered. Rob shrugged. Speak up, roared Beecham. He got out of the Jeep and came toward them. Rob quickly pocketed the keys. His heart thumped once loudly as if it was cautioning him to keep quiet and then it went back to beating normally. Well looky here, said Beecham when he saw Sistine. You out chasing girls, is that it? Man after my own heart. This your girlfriend? Beecham pounded Rob on the back. No sir, said Rob. He looked at Sistine. She was staring so hard at Beecham that Rob was afraid the man might burst into flames. I got more goods for you, Beecham said. I left him back at the motel with Ida Bell. Yes, sir, said Rob. What's your name, little thing, Beecham said, turning to Sistine. Rob's heart gave another warning thump. Lord only knew what Sistine would say to Beecham. But Sistine, as always, surprised him. She smiled sweetly at Beecham. Sissy, she said. Well, that's pretty, said Beecham. That's the kind of name worth running down the road after. He leaned over to Rob. Remember what we got going. You're keeping your manly secrets, ain't ya? Yes, sir, said Rob. Beecham winked. His toothpick wiggled. I got me some business in town, he said. He squeezed Rob's shoulder hard and then took his hand away. You and your girlfriend stay out of trouble now, you hear? Yes, sir, said Rob. Beecham swaggered back to the Jeep, and Rob and Sistine stood together and watched him get in it and roar down the highway. He's afraid, said Sistine. He's afraid of the tiger. That's why he's making you feed him. Rob nodded. That was another truth he had known without knowing it, the same as he had known that Sistine's father was not coming back. He must, he realized, know somewhere deep inside him more things than he had ever dreamed of. I'm sorry, he said, what I said about your daddy. I'm sorry. I don't want to talk about my father, said Sistine. Maybe he is coming to get you. He's not coming to get me, Sistine tossed her head, and I don't care. It doesn't matter. What matters is the tiger. Let's go. Let's go set him free. Chapter 27. The first key slid into the first lock so smoothly that it made Rob dizzy with amazement. It was going to be so easy to let the tiger go. 
Hurry, Sistine said to him, hurry up, get the other locks. He opened the second lock and the third, and then he took them off one by one and handed them to Sistine, who laid them on the ground. Now open the door, she said. Rob's heart pounded and fluttered in his chest. What if it eats us, he asked. He won't, said Sistine. He'll leave us alone out of gratitude. We're his emancipators. Rob flung the door wide. Get out of the way, he shouted, and they both jumped back from the door and waited. But the tiger ignored them. He continued to pace back and forth in the cage, oblivious to the open door. Go on, Rob said to him. You're free, Sistine whispered. But the tiger did not even look in the direction of the door. Sistine crept forward and grabbed hold of the cage. She shook it. Get out, she screamed. Come on, she said, turning to Rob. Help me, help me get him out. Rob grabbed hold of the fence and shook it. Get, he said. The tiger stopped pacing and turned to stare at them, both clinging like monkeys to the cage. Go on, Rob shouted, suddenly furious. He shook the cage harder. He yelled, he put his head back and howled, and he saw that the sky above them was thick with clouds. And that made him even angrier. He yelled louder. He shouted at the dark sky. He shook the cage as hard as he could. Sistine put a hand on his arm. Shh, she said. He's leaving, watch. As they stared, the tiger stepped with grace and delicacy out of the cage. He put his nose up and sniffed. He took one tiny step and then another then he stopped and stood still. Sistine clapped her hands and the tiger turned and looked back at them both, his eyes blazing. And then he started to run. He ran so fast, it, took, it looked to Rob like he was flying. His muscles moved like a river. It was hard to believe that a cage had ever contained him. It didn't seem possible. The tiger went leaping through the grass, moving farther and farther away from Rob and Sistine. He looked like the sun rising and setting again and again. And watching him go, Rob felt his own heart rising and falling, beating in time. Chapter 28. Oh, said Sistine in that voice that Rob loved. See, she said, that was the right thing to do. That was the right thing to do. Rob nodded, but in his mind, he saw a flash of green. He remembered what happened to Cricket. What, said Christine, turning to him, what are you thinking about? Rob shook his head. Nothing, he told her. Robert! The sound of his name came floating to them from the direction of the motel. That's my dad, he said, confused. That's my dad calling me. And then they heard Willie May. Do Jesus, she screamed, her voice high and wild. And then there was the crack of a gun. They both stood still, stunned and silent. And when Mil Willie May came running out from under the pine trees and saw them, she stopped. Thank you, Jesus, she said, looking up at the sky. Two whole children, thank you. Come here, she said. She opened her arms, come to me. Rob started walking toward her. He wanted to tell her that she was wrong. He wanted to tell her that he did not feel whole, but he did not have the energy or the heart to say anything. All he could manage was putting one foot in front of the other. All he could do was, all he could do was keep walking toward Willie May. Willie May led them back. And when Rob saw the tiger on the ground and his father standing over it, holding the rifle, he felt something rise up in him, an anger as big and powerful as the tiger, bigger. You killed him, he said to his father. I had to, his father said. That was my tiger, Rob screamed. You killed him, you killed my tiger. He ran at his father and attacked him. He beat him with his fists. 
He kicked him, but his father stood like a wall. He held the gun up over his head and kept his eyes open and took each hit took each hit without blinking. And Rob saw that hitting was, wasn't going to be enough, so he did something he thought he would never do. He opened his suitcase, and the words sprang out of it, coiled and explosive. I wish it had been you, he screamed. I wish it had been you that died. I hate you. You ain't the one I need. I need her. I need her. The world and everything in it seemed to stop moving. He stared at his father. His father stared at him. Say her name, Rob screamed into the silence. You say it. Caroline, his father whispered, with the gun still over his head, with his eyes still open. And with that word, the small sound of his mother's name, the world lurched back into motion like an old merry-go-round. It started to spin again. His father put the gun down and pulled Robert, Rob to him. Caroline, his father whispered, Caroline, Caroline, Caroline. Rob buried his face in his father's shirt. It smelled like sweat and turpentine and green leaves. I need her, Rob said. I need her too, said his father, pulling Rob closer. But we don't got her, neither of us. What we got, all we got is each other, and we got to learn to make do with that. I ain't gonna cry, Rob said, put, shutting his eyes, but the tears leaked out of him anyway. Then they came out in a rush and he couldn't stop. He cried from somewhere deep inside of himself, from the place where his mother had been, the same place that the tiger had been and was gone from now. Rob looked up and saw his father wiping tears from his own eyes. All right, said his father, holding Rob tight. That's all right, he said. You're okay. When Rob finally looked up again, he saw Willie Mae holding Sistine like she was a baby, rocking her and saying, shh. Willie Mae stared back at him. Don't think you're going to start pounding on me now, she said. No, ma'am, said Rob. He wiped the back of his arm, crossed his nose, and slid out of his father's arms. I went and got your daddy, Willie Mae told Rob as she swayed back and forth. Rockin' Sistine, I figured out what you was going to do, and there ain't no telling what that tiger would have done once he got out of that cage. I went and got your daddy so he could save you. Yes, ma'am, said Rob. He went and stood over the open-eyed tiger. The bullet hole in his head was red and small. It didn't look big enough to kill him. Go ahead and touch him, said Sistine. Rob looked up. She was standing beside him. Her dress was twisted and wrinkled. Her eyes were red. Rob stared at her and she nodded. So he knelt and put out a hand and placed it on the tiger's head. He felt tears rise up in him again. Sistine crouched down next to him. She put her hand on the tiger too. He was so pretty, she said. He was one of the prettiest things I've ever seen. Rob nodded. We have to have a funeral for him, Sistine said. He's a fa fallen warrior. We have to bury him right. Rob sat down next to the tiger and ran his hand over the rough fur again and again while the tears traveled down his cheeks and dropped onto the ground. Hi, classroom family. At the end of this passage, the tiger rose on up, Rob's feelings rose on up, and his suitcase of non-thoughts came open. Do you think that Rob's feelings would never have risen out of his suitcase if he had not fed the tiger and to let it rise out of the cage? What do you think? Leave a comment down below. I wanna hear what you think about that. And uh, like and subscribe, and I will see you next time for the conclusion of this story. Bye, ciao.